call the meeting to order uh, with a moment of silent prayer. And now with the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You trying to confuse me, Mrs. Frank? Was it me? Yeah, I don't know which one of you guys. <laughs> Roll call, please. <clears throat> Mayor Kendall. Present. Councilwoman Costantino. Present. Councilman Jenny. Here. Councilwoman LaPratt. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Here. Councilwoman Williams. Present. Councilman Tucson. Present. Acting City Manager Shemansky. Here. City Attorney Diwali. Here. Okay, I need a motion to approve of the minutes. Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, I'll, uh, pr uh, <laughs> sorry, I'll offer the motion to approve, receive, and file the minutes of the regular City Council meeting held February 22nd, 2023, to receive and file the Local Officers Compensation Commission meeting held February 21st, 2023, to receive and file the Planning Commission meeting held March 1st, 2023, and to receive and file the Cannabis Subcommittee meeting held on March 2nd, 2023. If I want to make a correction, I don't want to do that. If I want to suggest one, you want to wait. We, well, we, we need the support. support. I need the support, and then it's discussion. Okay. Support. All right. Now, any discussion? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, on, on the Cannabis Committee um, meeting, I wanted to, um, I think it was page 12 or page 2, about the next meeting. I thought we needed to make sure we input that because it was said that the meeting will remain on a Thursday. So potential vendors can check the website 18 hours before a Thursday. I think that's what you said, well, uh, Leslie, you, you have it up 18 hours before. Mm -hmm. So I think that should be added to that to make sure if they look back that they know not to be looking any other time but to look 18 hours before that Thursday. Is that it, possible? It's actually on the website now that it's likely going to be, I forget what day, March? No, April 20th, right? Is that what it was? <coughs> Sharon and I conversed as far as the items that she was going to provide. We have a tentative April 20th. April 20th. Okay. It's already on the website. Okay. Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, I noticed that the Local Officers Compensation Commission held their meeting and is recommending an increase in the salary of the Mayor and City Council. Um, I know that in the past, we have um, turned down uh, any salary increases. And right now, I guess I'm inclined to turn this increase down as well. And the reason being, I know we haven't had a, an increase in a, in a while. 2006? Probably. But the right now, I'm a little concerned. I mean, I've been concerned. We've been giving salary increases pretty often recently um, and I right now I don't feel as if we've got the income coming in we have a potential for income with the Eastland property but I'm feeling a little trepidation about giving salary increases when we're not really seeing the income and our pension is still at 38 percent funded um, so that's my that's my overall concern, and I know it's not a great increase, but it still sends a message. And, and in my opinion, the message is not quite right yet for this move. Uh, and so um, I know that if we do nothing, it goes through. Um, but uh, my feeling is that we should reject it. And so I don't know. Um, I think in the past we have just voted to, um, by motion, to uh, refuse the um, Local Officers Compensation Commission recommendation. And so can I put that move? Yep. Okay, so uh, I would like to move. Before we, we do that, can we have uh, 
John, can you respond to her concern sure. about the financial thing? Sure. Uh, th this year, you're going to be surprised uh, on the audit. Uh, we have been making steady progress. Uh, we don't have any, uh, I want to say, overlapping positions here. Um, and uh, it's going to show up in the city's financial audit this year. Uh, people are going to be surprised. I want to say as far as the pension funding, um, you said it was 38%. It's going to be probably about 44%. And we just received word that we are on the state's short list uh, to receive a grant. Uh, if we stick to the plan that the council voted on in the past, we're going to be brought up to 60% funding. That is going to be a tremendous financial asset for the city. Uh, to tell you the truth, the $200 uh, is not going to break the bank, uh, really. Uh, the Compensation Committee should have doubled the salaries for everything that you folks are doing on the side. If, if, if you left it to me, I, I would do that uh, because you guys have done a lot of work. And uh, like I said, we can well afford it. And you're going to see that uh, in the upcoming audit. Okay, Madam Mayor. Is there any further discussion? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at these amounts, so it's, it's not really that much. So the actual increase is, is well, how much from last year to what this one To $200 okay. a person. And inflation. That's over 12 months, right? Uh, 200 a month, I, I mean, that's really, that's, that's minimal. Right. I mean, that's like the total is like 200 a month. Yeah. So that yeah. increase is like. 2,400 a person. That's, that's. $12. Yeah. Something that's like that. It's $25 a month increase. <laughs> you did the math. So, so, Madam Mayor, yeah, that was my question. My question was, can we afford this? Can we, if we can afford $25 a month <laughs> increase for all of us, that's $12.50 a meeting. Well, but most of the work we do is outside of the meetings, actually. You know, you do all, you know, this, what, this time we spend the meetings minimal compared to what we do normally. So. Well, we're not in it for the money. No, we never were. I mean, you, you, you can't are, do this for the money because it's a loss once you campaign. Right. There are some communities not far from us uh, right. that, are, that receive no compensation, you know? And, and I guess. Right. Right. Standing alone. Okay. All right. Now, let's let's stay in order when we get this. Okay. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Uh, I don't really think this is going to break the bank. And some of us are definitely do a lot more work outside of the uh, of the coming to the meetings on, 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 on twice a month. Um, I know we're we I'm involved in like different pantries that we're delivering food to individuals. So this little extra 12 bucks a month would actually help in some of my gas and things. Some of us are, are not even available to be able to participate in a lot of community activities like many others. And so the ones that are doing it, I think we should be considered keeping this and approving this for everyone. I don't think it's that much to break the bacon. I don't think it's getting out a bad message to anybody. Is there anyone else who have any discussion? Okay. So Ms. Frank, do we make a motion to accept it or do we just do nothing? Well, if you do nothing, it will automatically go. Okay. Um, it's still up in the air if somebody would like to make a motion to pull that off of the agenda to have a discussion more specifically and make another motion to reject it. Madam Mayor? Yes. It's sounds as if the majority of the council wants to go through with accepting this. Mm -hmm. And so I won't offer the motion if the council prefers that we don't touch it. Yeah, my, my first inclination, like Ms. Vicki, was to say no. And um, Mr. Toussaint and I had couple of conversations about and I, when he called me I said no I'm not going to accept that and then I thought about it a little bit and he talked to me about it like 
with inflation and everything like that. I mean, each of us has our different areas of the community that we cover. Right. You know, some people do the, you know, food bank. Some of us do like, you know, veterans and parents meetings and different things like that. We all have our own different things that we do. Um, but I, I think that as our community becomes more prosperous, we, we're almost being disrespectful to local, or to the compensation board be, to continue to reject this. We, I voted no on this for what, I don't know, 17 years or 18 years I voted no on this. But we've never had this level of inflation since Carter. We've, you know, gas prices up and down, up and down, but mostly up. I mean, it's, I think it might be okay to say yes this time. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I just wanted to add to that, you know, knowing that it's only like $12.50 increase is not really that much. I mean, think about gas prices alone, you know, it's like you know, 3 dollars for your tank of gas. So I think this is, you know, very small, you know. So, you know, it's more like a thank you for being on the city council and doing the things that we do. So it's not like we're, it's not like a huge amount, it's a huge amount. I'll say no too, but this is meager, so. Madam Mayor, I feel like most of us donate from our, from our, our own pockets. Uh, the amount of money probably equal to this. <coughs> and I know, like our former mayor donated the entire amount. I've always donated that equivalent or more. And I feel like if you, you don't want to accept it, that's fine. You don't have to accept it, but you can also turn around and give it back to the community in whatever way you feel is right through time, money, you know, whatever. Okay. All right, is there any, no further discussions? Uh, we can have all in favor of passing the motion for the approvals of the minutes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, right now we have public comments on agenda items. Agenda items only. You can speak to what is on the agenda. Uh, if you have any comments, please. It's your turn to address those on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Madam Mayor. Yes. I'll make the resolution to approve consent agenda items one through five. Support. Any discussion? Madam Mayor? Yes. Yeah, I had, a uh, I had a question about number five. Is the payment to Gross Point Farms Inter Municipal Radio System uh, for the $7,116.14? Uh, when I looked through this, um, one part of this said that it was for a conference our part of the conference but then the invoice said just radio and it, if I just read the invoice it looked like that we that there was a radio purchase which it wasn't and it said for a conference so I was just wondering what what is this really what's this for Maybe sure. it's it's actually we along with all the gross points uh, share 911 information and that helps us as a um, as a community coordinating equipment, manpower, police, fire, emergencies, and uh, we all kick in for the cost of, of not only operating the radio system, but the maintenance of the towers, the the personnel that's involved, uh, updates, you know, from the state. And Chief, would you want to have a few words here? And uh, this is just our proportionate share. Yeah, I think you summed it up pretty well there, sir. It's just our, our, our share of the um, radio system that we use with, with the gross points. Communication with uh, first responders. Yeah, our radio system. Okay, so why does it say for our 
are sure the Zoom expenses for the conference of Eastern Way radio system? Um, I, I, do you want me to explain that, Chief? Sure. Yeah. I, yeah, please. Okay, what, what happens is we're given a certain amount of money. Uh, it comes through the federal government. It goes through Wayne County. Wayne County has a formula on how they distribute uh, the revenues, uh, you know, for the radio system. And what happens is we pay a proportion based on a formula. It, it generally comes down to <coughs> population and the number of calls that goes through the system. Uh, and that's how they generate the invoice. I want to say Harper Woods uh, has, has quite a few calls uh, for emergency services, you know, 911, uh, medical services, fire, police, and this is, this is our share. Now, the invoice may not be that detailed, but we attend meetings, uh, I want to say twice yearly, to see how the money comes back, how it's allotted to the communities, and we do get a share of those uh, revenues that go through the Eastern Conference of Wayne County. And again, from those revenues, we go ahead and we pay our proportionate share of operating the system. It, it, it's, I know it's hard to understand, but th this is our share billed quarterly of, you know, the expenses of running the radio. And Chief, you can add whatever. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to operate without it. I mean, yeah. plain and simple. And they, they did, they gave us a booklet this time that kind of broke down each cost. I'd be more than happy to uh, prepare an email with that so the council can review it as well. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that tomorrow. Right, Chief. Yeah. Um, just to put this into proportion, uh, the general expenses uh, for our radio system, just July 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022, was over $70,000. So for us to only pay seven thousand, we're actually getting a good deal. I know that the government kicks in part of the money and things like that, but for us to only pay, you know, seven thousand, mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's very fair. No further questions. No, it's just that um, I, I was fine with what it's for. It's just the way that was worded it was a little ambiguous. It sounded like this was for something else. Thank you. Yes? Um, I, I've always had a problem, had an initial problem with the payments of the Helm Light. I always thought that was kind of excessive, but I was really glad at the letter that um, uh, city clerk put into the um, minutes in here. In fact, from the uh, Helm Group, we do get about 8,417 meals on wheels delivered to seniors right in our city. Right. And we also have uh, Harbor Woods residents use the PAATS for 4,443 individual trips to medical visits, groceries, and pharmacies, banking, and other errands. So we are utilizing the service quite a bit, and I think if all of you are not aware of it that much, that may be a service that may be available, that is a service that's also available to all of you in the community. Madam Mayor, yes. can I expound on that? Um, so doing the math, the residents of Harbor Woods use um, for um, the Meals on Wheels, we get, we're using 45% of all, of all the meals delivered go right here to Harper Woods. So 55% um, go to all the gross points. And then for Pats, um, we're using 35% of, of all the transportation. So I think that we're getting a big bang for, for this grant money on the amount that, that they're giving back to Harper Woods. I think it's a great organization. Okay. May I say a little bit more mm -hmm. on that? I know also, for those of you who may not be aware, that they do have a number of programs that take place at their, uh, uh, the Helm facility that are available to residents, uh, including education programs and social programs and this sort of thing. Um, they have some programs that would cost a little bit extra, but many of their programs are free. Uh, and so I think that that's a very valuable service for our seniors. And I just wanted to point that out because if seniors haven't checked into that, it might be um, a very 
worthwhile thing to do. See what they have available. Yeah, I also want to point out that this comes from our community development block grant funds. So this is coming through the county. So it's not like we're having to draw it from our budget. It's not like our taxpayers pay extra money for this. You're actually, this is like a bonus. Mr. Hinton, would you want to expound on anything more regarding this? Uh, since you are in charge of our CDGB funds, uh, yes. and also know that DAAA is also the sponsor of the Mills on Wayne. When, the, when Wayne County took back the home improvement program to run it themselves, a decision was made to give a constant $20,000 to all 34 communities to do what they wanted to do with it. We chose, along with the five Gross Point communities, to, to use the 20,000, pool it, and pay for the services of the home and the transportation operation. So that's how it all came together. We are pooling our money, our 20,000, with the other five communities. And it makes for a big boost, of course, to the home. As you just noted, it's well worth it. And Hopper Woods gets a real good proportional uh, share of services from it. Thank you so much. Is there any other further questions? Just one thing I'd like to add, and we're going to get reimbursed for this payment from yes. Wayne County as well. So this is actually free. We have to put the money up initially. Uh, Ty will compose a bill and we will get reimbursed from Wayne County for this 20,000. We will get 100% of this $20,000 back. Yes. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can you have any more discussion? Roll call vote, Mrs. Frank. <clears throat> Councilwoman Costantino. Yes. Councilman Jenny. Yes. Councilwoman LaPrat. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Sawicki. Yes. Councilman Tucson. Yes. Councilwoman Williams. Yes. Mayor Kendall. Yes. Okay, resolution passes. <clears throat> okay, this takes us to old business, and since we have none, it takes you to new business, and that's the city manager report. There are no city manager reports. Sometimes <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> Yes, you see John's lovely tan, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Comes out of a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, call the audience. If there's anyone that has anything to say, please come up to the mic and identify yourself. Yes, good evening. I'm Father from the Monastery on Old Homestead. And uh, some of us had discussed before the meeting tonight while I was waiting the situation that we have. The Monastery uh, purchased the property in 1999. And uh, before we purchased the property, we were advised by the city manager at the time uh, that it would probably be in our best interest to go door to door to all the neighbors and explain what we wanted to do so that there would be no offense and no shock to um, perhaps a possible change of the face of the end of the neighborhood architecturally or uh, you know uh, ignorance sometimes causes fear and frustration and anger and in the modern world people don't usually walk around in black robes and long beards and ponytails and bells clanging and so on and so forth so anyhow we've been here for almost 25 years and we've spent millions of dollars at the monastery and done our very best to support the city of Harper Woods, whether it was raising funds for the uh, canine or whatever the case may be, or privately for people. But we have come into um, a number of problems in the last uh, maybe 10 years especially, when the neighborhood seemed to have uh, changed from uh, homeowners to perhaps renters and so on and so forth. I'm not sure if this is the, ca the case, the cause, but there was definitely a change in the face of uh, that end of Harper Woods. 
which is off of Kelly, between Beaconsfield and Kelly. We have had a number of complaints with um, drugs in the past. We've had personally five vehicles stolen from the driveway. We've had, um, unfortunately, some threats against the monastery because of our ethnic, supposed ethnic ties, because of the world situation, which we have nothing to do. We are Americans, 100%. And uh, but lately, the, particularly the last three years, new residents moved into the house across from the monastery. And it happens to be the house where the murder took place prior to them moving in. So we also went through that trauma in that end of the neighborhood. So when the uh, new family moved in, the young kids were too young to drive. They may have been 13 and 14. We started out with the problem with the children before pot was legalized, smoking and causing a ruckus every time we had church services. We've complained about it. It's all on the file. So five years passed, and the oldest son is now able to drive. So he has a sports car, and he races up and down the street all day, all night. The music is in... Uh, Mayor, you've witnessed it with your daughter sitting in the back of the monastery when we had our dinner. Uh, we discussed that. I believe uh, Cheryl was there also. We had a nice meal at the monastery, and we have been three years complaining about this issue about the guy across the street. So um, he first had a yellow charger and racing up and down the street all hours of the day. And then COVID came. His car got stolen, so things were finally quiet for a six-month period. COVID hit. Everyone was under lockdown, quiet. <coughs> COVID restrictions were lifted. His car got stolen. He buys a new car, a Mustang. Every week now, he adds something new to it. Now, this past week, he's added a muffler that sounds like a machine gun that goes, goes off. And 2.30 in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, from Friday to Sunday, we have been complaining about this one teenager since 2023. I pulled up the church's email file with all the sent videos to the police department since July 30th of 2020 with almost 72 documented videos of the problems that we've had. We are still having the problems. I have a mother that lives on the Monastery's church property with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, and she's in the final stage of it. At two o'clock in the morning, when he revs up the engine like a machine gun, the caregivers call and say, Father, we cannot get your mother back to sleep. That is harassment. And I am saying, I am fed up. If something isn't done, the monastery will file a lawsuit against the city because it's since 2023. This young man has been ticketed a number of times. He doesn't pay his ticket. He doesn't show up for court. He has now, I believe, Chief, he has a subpoena for court. Yes, sir. But he probably isn't going to show up. And so this is not getting resolved. And I understand from the attorney, correctly, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong, that there's nothing that anyone can do because of the laws in Michigan that you can't force someone to come to pay their ticket or follow through with their subpoena. That's lawlessness. Why do we have laws if the people aren't responsible to have to follow through with them? And we have a very big problem. It's affected the community. So we set out to get a petition. We have maybe, I don't know, uh, Chief, I don't know how many, 10 people within the local housing. Some of them wouldn't sign because they're afraid of a drive-by shooting. They're afraid of this family. I'm not afraid of the family. I'm a priest. My life is waiting for the kingdom, as silly as that may sound to some. But I am fed up with what it's done to the end of Harper Woods and to a very beautiful community that we have invested in. There is lawlessness. We have asked for speed bumps. We have asked for the end of our street to be blocked off. Even when the other uh, building commissioner, Lee was his name, we tried. The monastery was going to pay for a greenery wall. We were told we couldn't because they just had the problem in the cabbage patch. At they had to take down their barrier between Detroit and Gross Point mm -hmm. because of whatever reasons. 
We're not having problems from people coming in from Gross Point causing the trouble. We're having problems from Detroit coming in, speeding all day, all night, every day, especially the weekends, and the neighbor. We still, after all these years, and the monasteries offered to pay for the speed bumps. It's still not done. We've offered to put a temporary block up on the end of Old Homestead, blocking off the automobile center, which is, they're great people, they're doing great work, but they also test drive all their engines revving up to make sure they did the proper maintenance on a car in a residential neighborhood. And I know my neighbors, and I'm not gonna say their name, they live two doors down from that, and I know you know who they are because I'm sure they've been in here complaining. It's a mess, it's a mess. One of our people had a gun pulled on him walking to CVS. Yes. Oh, it's already gone. It would already went to court and everything like that. I don't know whatever happened to the person. I had to appear already with one of our cars. I had to go downtown for the court case. It was dismissed because even the neighbors who saw and identified the victim would not, not take responsibility because they didn't want to give up a brother. And you know what they told me? Father, you should understand. You didn't have a start in life like they did. They need a second chance, and that made me irate because I am equal for everybody. We have shown that by being in Harper Woods. We open our doors to everybody who asks for our, our help. As long as they're not violating what we feel is the gospel of Christ from our church's perspective, which is over 2,000 years old. I want to tell you one more thing. Three weeks ago, in every six months, we have delegations. When Chief Burke was the chief, he always had a police car on the street because we had delegations coming from Israel, from Jerusalem, the holy city. One of the houses that the monastery has is the house of the Archbishop of Jaffa outside of Tel Aviv. He was here three weeks ago to anoint my mother. He said, Father, there is more noise than in the Palestinian occupied territory in your end of Harper Woods. You need to get out. We'll take you in, in the Holy Land. How do I walk away from 20 years and millions of dollars of hand labor with this, not just the gardening, but the construction, and all the donations that have been gathered, and the image. I want you just to consider for one minute the image. Whether you believe in orthodoxy, whether you're Christian or not Christian, it's not the issue. Whether you're white or black or Russian or Ukrainian or Serbian, it does, it's not the issue. The image that the monastery has given on the internet and throughout the world in the name of Harper Woods has never happened before. Everybody around the world, from a religious Christian's perspective, Catholic or Orthodox, has at some point heard of St. Sava's Monastery, the Royal Eagle Restaurant, or the Gardens. Because our website hits, show it. I'm telling you, if we pick up and move, we're going to abandon the buildings. And you are going to have a decline in the image of Harper Woods because of what has done to the Christian community in Harper Woods. The Roman Catholics have moved out. I knew Father Bob very, very well before he passed. There's nothing left. But why? Because of this kind of lawlessness. And I brought neighbors. I have people that live on the old homestead, and they can attest to the same thing. I'm not the only one complaining about this drag racing. And also, I see you have a TV there. This young man has a YouTube video called Mr. S Mr. Speedy. If that thing works, I'm welcome to have one of our people take it off the cell phone and show you what I go through every day. One was posted 17 minutes before I showed up here tonight. You should see this. This is a person, 20 years old, drag racing through Harper Woods with a camera in his hand with infants in the back seat and the mother sitting in the front seat with the rear view mirror seeing the image of the monastery and all the houses on old homestead drag racing with smoke coming out of the tires. This is documented now for three years. At one point, a racial slur was given to me and it was posted and we called the FBI because I was walking down the sidewalk in a cassock and I was slandered for my religious views and I was told to keep my mouth closed because I would be the one slandered for racial comment. We called the FBI and the last thing I want to say and I don't know if the chief is allowed to say or I don't even know if it's come through yet. So what we did is we moved, 
an FBI agent onto our property for three years. A retired FBI agent. And she's documented things. She's now living out of state, gone back to the FBI after officially retiring under Comey in Washington, D.C., came to live with us, and she is supposed to be writing a letter to the city of Harper Woods to explain what she personally had viewed living on the church property. Nothing has been done in three years. Something has to be done. It has to be done. Or the monastery is going to have to take some legal, and I don't want to do this. We didn't come to invest in Harper Woods to make a problem for Harper Woods. But Harper Woods should be happy to have us and should support us, because this is lawlessness. It's corrupt to allow this to keep going on. Thank you. I have others if they would like to also say Thank something. You. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I live on home, old homestead myself, and uh, we have quite a few properties in Hopper Woods. But I, um, I have experienced a lot of moving vehicles on the, on the block, fast driving. I asked the mayor for, I know she can't do it by herself, to get us speed bumps over there. I'm not aware of all the things that Father John was talking about, but I do know that he had a pro problem with the young man across the street. In fact, I even tried to bring, those, bring them together. In fact, they were supposed to have lunch together, and somehow I know that, that cancer that talked to the father and Father John and the father's young man, trying to bring peace to that situation. And uh, somehow I know that, that lunch got canceled. But he doesn't come my way. But Father John told me he goes up and down from, uh, from his part of the block towards Kelly. I live toward, close to Beaconsville. So I have not experienced what he experienced, but I know it's happening. And I understand what Father John's going through. Because some Sundays are uh, when a lot of folks at the church, there's somebody do be playing a lot of music. And I think it's an insult to Christian, when you're playing loud, bad music, and church is going on. Whether it's Baptist, Protestant, whatever, it doesn't matter with me. It's church is church. And we all, it's Christian, we serve the same God. So, make a long story short, Father John has some valid concerns. And I think somebody needs to do something about it. Uh, I'm not saying uh, rest a man, I'm not saying, but I think somebody to mediate, you need to talk to these people. Father John, you have a nice restaurant over there. Somebody here can talk with that young man, family, and kind of bring those, those two together. It is, you have to talk to the father and the mother, not the son. So, I advise someone to make that, that situation go away. It needs to go away for the good of our city. I think Father John's doing a great job down the street. And I, I'm the only one that ever shot a gospel video there, only one that ever shot a video period there. And so I know it's not a racist situation. Some people are making it trying to say like it's a racist thing. It's not racist. I think Father John one of the nicest men in, this, in, this, in the city. And I support him with all my heart. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, my name is Peter Bosorowski, and I've been a resident of Harper Woods for uh, 16 years now, actually, as of last week. And um, I love the location of the Harper Woods area. I came here to actually work and uh, help raise funds for the church for uh, Father Pohomi at the monastery. I'm the chef at the restaurant, and I also live close by. I'm connected to the community, and I've kind of witnessed, I've been the side person witnessing all the troubles and drama 
that's been transpiring. And uh, it saddens me to see that um, as a resident, it sometimes is difficult to want to call the police every time there's a, a, a loud noise. Um, but let me tell you, the no loud noise that we do get to experience on our side of the street is unnatural. It's too high of a noise. There has to be some, some sort of noise pollution uh, measurement. But I will tell you that the muffler is not your typical regular muffler. It is one of those really jacked up. And then what happens is I, would, I live at 18791, so that's about five homes down from the main gates of the monastery. And at 2.30 in the morning last night, the noise was so hard, it actually woke me up and I was at a trauma, like it was a shock. And I thought there was like a war zone machine gun going off. It was that loud and it was going on for about one minute. And then he will take off uh, for God knows whatever reason. I think there has to be some sort of explanation, friendly explanation saying that's not okay to do to your cohabitants. It's not a respectful thing to do after 10 p.m. There has to be some kind of enforcement of a law in sense of noise pollution. There has to be some kind of a, people need to sleep. I work 19 hours a day, sometimes 17 hours a day. It's unrealistic, but I work a lot. When I sleep four or five hours at nighttime, I wish to sleep. As a resident of the city, I would like to ask to be able to you know, have that privilege and not having to call police every single time that happens because they have other things to worry about. You know, there's bigger picture going on. Little kid should be held accountable. Please just be a normal person and don't cause trouble late at night, please. So we are asking for some sort of a intervention to stop this nonsense. It's gone too far for way too long for what it is. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I was at another meeting before I got here. I was, I was a little late. But the state rep, the Michigan state representative from District 11, Veronica Pies, will be next door here, third Monday of the month, um, this month. I guess that might be the 20th, I guess. She told, asked me if I'd remind everybody that she'd be here. So. You said what now? Pardon? You said what? Uh, state rep would do what? Yeah, Veronica Pies. You need to address the council. Right. You need to address the council. Oh, oh, well, okay. Yeah, Veronica Pies will be here, or next door to the library, third Monday of the month. She'll be here. Six o'clock. She might come to the meeting after her oh, meeting. At the library. Yeah. Oh, okay. She All just right. wanted me to remind everybody if uh, okay. they didn't get the word. All right, thank you very much. She was on Sacred Shores this Monday. No? Okay, thank There's you. All right, is there anyone else who would like to speak? Good evening. I am alive. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of other things in the community myself. I'm in scouting and a bunch of other stuff. So sometimes, plus church conflicts sometimes. So um, just a couple of things. Um, seeing how we've kind of saved some money over the winter <laughs> with uh, not having to salt or, or plow or whatever, I was wondering if we could do something about Lansdowne between um, Woodside all the way to Elkhart and not just put cold patch in there because that, all that does is it just, it's making it worse and worse and worse. My suggestion is, is if you don't wanna <clears throat> completely redo it, and I've seen it done and I've seen it last for quite a while, is hot tar and pea gravel, which keeps the moisture out of, the coal patch doesn't do that. It just deteriorates. I know it's a little more expensive, but it's not quite as expensive as tearing up the road. And maybe it could be done, that could be done a little further on down the line, okay? Um, 
garbage problem up on Kelly Road. And I do mean garbage. Um, next to uh, Life Builders, those buildings right there, one's a tattoo parlor, the other one's a, what you call it, the dumpster. And I've called several times downstairs and basically nothing done. The dumpster was uh, waste management or whatever it was, was full. And it keeps, the stuff keeps breaking open and flying out onto Kelly Road and, the, and along the fence where all the neighbors are there. And now the dumpster's gone and there's still a huge pile, higher and probably longer than where you're sitting. And the, where the Chinese restaurant used to be, there's a bunch of garbage bags piled up in back of it, okay? And then if you go behind the other hall and over where um, our gang is, their dumpsters are filled, not being emptied, and now there's mattresses there. And this is getting to be ridiculous up there. Um, I don't know what can be done, but uh, the other thing is um, we need to change the parking at our gang. One side is parallel. The other side on my side of the street, which would be Eastland side, it's like a, a angle, which makes it very hard to get in and out of Ross Common. Or you get someone that's, those are filled and you got the other day we went, we were going up to Kelly Road and we're there and here's this person just parked. The f things are filled and yeah, I'll call the police. I understand and they're busy, but by the time they get there, they're gone. And I understand that. That's, but what it needs to be changed is that parking because this person, we give them the horn to move and they get out of their car and start swearing at us. And they're parked right in the roadway. It's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's getting ridiculous up there. Plus, the parking on, on Kelly Road is getting to be ridiculous. They're, they're double parking. Uh, one tow truck parks on that little island between Kelly and, and the parking area all the time. Uh, over by the tattoo parlor, they're not only parking there, but they're also parking on the sidewalks. It's just getting to be ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, I have a neighbor who lives at 19191 Ross Common. The other duplex side is, is 19183. Her landlord is trying to do everything she can to get that lady out. She's on Section 8. They just raised her, what's called, for, for the amount of Section 8. But the deal is here, the lady hasn't paid the taxes in three years. And she don't live in the United States. She lives in Puerto Rico. Yes, she's trying to do whatever she can to get this lady out because she wants fourteen or twelve hundred dollars for this place. And she, as of March first, she's three years behind, so it's gone into de default. So this is what's going on: the rental problems and everything else. Like he just said, my my street's the same way as far as speeding, and I would imagine it might have been the other, the same gentleman. Uh, Last week, three o'clock in the morning, went down my street. Uh, he blew through, I know he blew through the stop sign coming from Kelly Road to, to Beaconsfield, and it woke me up. So, just a few things, and I'm sorry I wasn't there, and you probably want me to go away again, but I hope for you everybody's all right. Um, I was listening uh, very closely to what Father John had to say, and, I, and I'm not sure we still have it. I know the court system a couple of years ago started a remediation um, between neighbors, 
that neighbors had some issue with another neighbor, that was something that the court system had set up so that neighbors could, that, that you could talk with we that neighbor. Wait, we don't have that anymore? Right. Okay. So I know it, it had been set up. I, we don't have Can that. I make a comment from here? Or no? uh -uh. Not now. Wait, excuse me. It's time for you to speak and everyone else to be quiet. Okay, so I wasn't aware that we don't have it anymore. I know it had been set up uh, by our previous judge. Um, noise ordinance, we have a noise ordinance in place. And so that if something was happening at like 2.30, which is beyond our noise ordinance um, time, um, that's something that has to be reported by whoever hears it or whatever. And then once you report it, something can be done about it. Um, because that is in place. There's a, something you know about that. Uh, speed bumps. I, we had speed bumps a couple of years ago. We tried the speed bumps. But part of our problem with speed bumps was our snow plow. And snow plow speed bumps got, when the snow plow comes through, you know, pushes up our speed bumps. And we can't have the same speed bumps that they have in like Detroit because our streets is made out of a different our streets are made out of a, a different uh, surface. It's not the same. So that's why we don't have the same type of speed bumps. Um, so I don't know if we still could have speed bumps though on the street. Um, that seems to me like something that's plausible. You know? um, and so that was the three things, comments I had concerning uh, Father John's issue. Um, but most of it, uh, as you, it sounds like you've been reporting it. And of course, we can't make someone do something. That's always a choice. So if he doesn't come to court, I'm, I, don't, I don't know anything about the court system, you know, what happens, you know, if people don't show up. But um, I know you, you can't make people do things, so that is a choice. Uh, you could make the complaint, and, and our police can follow through. But like I said, speed bump seems plausible. I guess no remediation. And we do have noise ordinance as long as it's reported and that should be taken care of uh, with the police. Um, last two things. I would like to wish my mother an 89th birthday um, on March 12th. She's turning 89. And also my son, a happy birthday before March 19th. And that's it. Father John, I, I feel terrible for everything that's going on. I know all the wonderful things that you've brought to the city. Your restaurant is phenomenal. Um, I do like the idea of your neighbor uh, finding somebody that can talk to this young man's parents and you know, invite him to, to lunch. I don't know what we can do to make this situation better, but we certainly don't want the monastery to leave Harbor Woods. Um, Councilman uh, Williams said a, 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 you know, a lot of what I would have said. Um, one other thing I, I just wanted to do about these power outages. Um, I know Harper Woods wasn't affected a ton. I know our DPW yard was out on the first one, on the second one, some areas of Ridgemont. Um, so my latest call to our state rep was, uh, what are we gonna do? Um, are we gonna, and there, I was promised that the state is going after DTE and we're going to try to fix some of this infrastructure problem because this is getting these some of these people were out of power for 10 days I mean it's just crazy or they lost power and then then get, got it back and two days later they lost it again so <coughs> once again contact your state reps and, and have them uh, help us out that's, that's what I got today All right. just really quick I'd like to thank the DPW my, my heart <laughs> For uh, taking care of the snow and the slush that was happened last storm we had, it was very difficult as it came down in God knows what you want to call that. But um, they did a fantastic job and the roads looked great. So that is where I stand. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My roads didn't look so great, but I'm not going to get into that. What I do want to say is um, that I stand with you, Father, because I the trouble we've been having with 
teenage drivers with people who are speeding throughout the community is something that I've spoken about many times. Uh, and we certainly don't want to lose the monastery. I think you've been a good presence in Harper Woods, and I don't want to see that change. But I think that these scuff laws need to be reined in. And if what I'm hearing is true, that people who get ticketed, people who have subpoenas, are able to circumvent the law by not showing up. That's a problem. I think that we need to find out what we can do to get a law passed in our state that prevents that from happening again. And I think that we need to bombard our state legislature to say this has to change because that I'm sure if it's happening here, it's happening in a lot of different communities. Um, I also know that I've already spoken um, to our state rep to see if there's a chance we could you know, have communities uh, have the ability to uh, ticket based on video evidence like they do in other states and like they do in Canada. Um, other states have the opportunity to have video monitoring of streets, to have you know uh, cross streets and um, traffic signals monitored, and when they see a car speeding through, you know, a, a, a traffic signal, um, disregarding traffic signals, uh, the people get a ticket in the mail. You know, why can't we do that in Michigan? We've got people blasting through stop signs, through traffic lights all the time. It's dangerous to drive because of the way people just disregard our traffic signals. You know, so I don't know, I don't know how long it's going to take to fight that fight, but it can't just be done by the people that are sitting up here. We have to get in touch with our state representatives and our state senators and say that we're not going to stand by and watch this happen any longer. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and I just want you to know, sir, that I stand with you um, and that I think we need to take a stand about this. Now, my question is, and I'm not going to get into police business, but if it's after hours, I'm wondering if we could get you know, a couple of patrol cars through there to see if we can catch this person, stop him, confiscate the vehicle. I mean, let's get it off the street if this is a constant and nonstop problem. Can, uh, can uh, unmarked cars be put into, you know, into position to monitor that kind of movement? You know, I, I'm certainly not going to do police business here. I don't know enough about that. Thank you. But I do want to throw that idea out there, that maybe it is something that we can do now, especially if it's, a, if it's someone who's violating our, our ordinance, our, our um, noise ordinance after hours when we know we can stop it. You know, it, they violate the noise ordinance during the day, it's a different matter. But when you're violating it after 11 p.m., that is part of the ordinance that would permit the police to stop that vehicle immediately. All right, so I'm just going to throw that out there and uh, God bless our police department for what they do. And be safe out there. It's scary. All right. Mr. Tucson. Thank you. Well, this, this incident has really impacted. I mean, you see it's totally affecting the PMC on City Council. I was, you know, one of the first thing that comes up to me again is the speed bumps. Um, I know we've had some controversy about the speed bumps, but I know we have speed bumps on Anita. And I'm just like, why can't we put those same kind of speed bumps on him, two or three streets, um, two or three on that one street? I'm not sure what the issue is on that. But that would be one of me. If we had that speedy car, that would be one of the first things I would consider. And maybe the horrible ones that we could just put down and take back up. At least have to, you know, they may, knowing them, they may take them up themselves. So I would put something a little more permanent. <laughs> um, another comment on uh, a thing, uh, uh, street uh, a congressman, Street Tanabar, he was uh, on live home tonight and um, talking about entrepreneurship's inflation and reduction, uh, inflation reduction act. Sorry I couldn't hear all of it, but it is interesting to hear about him. Uh, also, um, uh, I'm still pushing, promoting some of our small businesses. Uh, we had, there was a meeting that was held last week trying to get all our small businesses together. 
one business we use a lot around here is like x -ray Electric. And they're constantly complaining about the Ann Harper was, and we never used them. And we don't use them as much as we should. I know there have been issues with them with their pricing, but I'm sure they're willing to negotiate to get more Harper Woods business. And I would like us to kind of look into, you know, supporting them a little bit more than what we do. And, um, and that's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I wanted to um, touch on the noise and speeding. The, I know it's especially bad at the monastery. I was there one time when the gentleman was gunning his engine, and I was way in the backyard, and I could hear it all the way back there. And uh, I can't even imagine what it would be like to have to deal with that at 2 or 3 in the morning. Um, I've been dealing with quite a bit of noise on peerless, speeding and noise on peerless. And uh, I know that there's other spots in Harper Woods where we have a lot of noise and a lot of speeding, and it tends to be all the same places. Um, I'm wondering, is there anything that the Ordinance Committee can do about this? And also, when is the next Ordinance Committee meeting? Um, I'd like to know. And also, I know um, for a fact that Detroit has been cracking down on noise and things like that. And so if they're cracking down, we need, we need to keep in lockstep and we need to be cracking down as well. Um, I know that our ordinance says there has to be a complaint for noise, but um, what about people who are repeat offenders with speeding or repeat offenders with noise? I think maybe we could step up the fines or something like that. We have increasing fines. And uh, I don't know if there's something we can do, but I'd like to discuss that at our next ordinance committee meeting. Um, because this is really affecting the quiet enjoyment of many of our residents. And Harper Woods should be a quiet bedroom community. And we don't even have the mall anymore to contend with. But we've got, you know, in the summer, we've got these motorbikes and things going up and down. Uh, we had one kid came down our street, went around, took the curve too fast, spun out, slid on his bike. And my daughter and I ran out to help him. But honestly, it was his own stupid fault. Like, but you know, you still take pity on him because he was actually hurt, but um, we, we do need to really find a way to crack down. I do support speed bumps. On my way to work, I have to go over like four sets of speed bumps. I'm a Detroit public school teacher, and yeah, we got another one here. That's what I have to deal with, but guess what? They work. They really work. And I know I slow down for them, and everybody else slows down for them because they don't want to break their car up. So it's something we need to consider. Even if we just, you know, put them in for spring to fall or something, we need to do something because this is out of control. And, um, you know, I know our court's way far behind. Things aren't getting prosecuted. Uh, they, they are, it is getting better. I will say the courts are getting better. I, I did notice that um, that tenant that had been trying to evict for you know about ten months. Finally, it got through the court. Finally, we were able to get it into the hands of the right bailiff. They are finally out. We've been cleaning up the property, and now if you drive down Eastwood, you'll never guess which house it was they lived in. Before, you would know immediately which house they lived. So um, anyway. I'm just, I'm glad you guys are coming and sharing your concerns, and I appreciate my fellow council members too. Maybe at our goal setting next week, this is something we can look into. Um, because we have goal setting 6 o'clock next Monday, right? Yeah, so that's something we can look into, talk about, and maybe actually set a plan to put things in motion that will help us bring this community back to quiet enjoyment for all of our residents. All right. So, seeing this with uh, Father, um, I had talked to um, uh, a 
resident on the street, and uh, regarding the speed bumps or even the cul-de-sac. And what I suggested at that time is what I still suggest, is that you petition your rest of your neighbors to see if they is something they want on their block, especially when you talk about a cul-de-sac. So, you know, that has never gone forward, so we've never moved forward with that idea. So that's one answer to your problem. But the other answer is really the enforcement of our laws is on the books. And I know that our public safety director is taking notes and trying to figure out exactly how he can make this all work for our community. Uh, we cannot single out any one person, but if it's one person that's causing a problem, then that person needs to be negated. It needs to stop. So I'm asking, uh, we will talk with our public safety director and figure out what is the best solution we can do to remedy your problem. I just want to say the police department uh, uh, and Sergeant Sparks uh, uh, is excellent. Excuse me. Well, I'm, you know, you've had your opportunity, and I, I was very liberal because it was only three minutes, supposedly. But I allowed you to express everything that you need to express there. And any conversation that we need afterwards, we would do it after the end of the meeting, okay? Um, saying that speeding, I've spoke on it several times here. It's not just your street. It is all over this country, really, because it's, it's people that just don't want to follow the rules, just don't give any care about anyone else's safety or their desire to get where they need to get, not worry about anyone else. So it's, it's not just a problem on your street. It's a problem that I face going through any community and not just here in Harper Woods. But we will look into it and see what we can do. At a, a, you know, we can't solve your problem here tonight, mainly. Another thing is that when we talk about the Eastern Conference, Eastern Conference is like the Down River Conference. The, our Eastern Conference here for Wayne County has been very dormant. The Down River Conference is strong and powerful and keeps downriver in front of Wayne County's face. We need to figure out who all is a part of the Eastern Conference and make them accountable so that we here on this eastern portion of Wayne County gets what is due to us. So uh, that's something we need to look into to make sure. I, I don't remember, but when I used to work with Michigan Works, that's when I figured out that we had an Eastern Conference and there was no participation. So uh, that's something we need to look into and to figure out to make sure that we get the attention. It's not so much as the dollars, but let's give us the attention that they give to Down River. Make sure that we get the attention and monies to make our city better and our communities around here better. Um, let's see, what else? Speed bumps. Everybody keeps talking about speed bumps. Speed bumps, truly, if somebody's flying up the street, they give us a fat rat behind about a speed bump. You slow down for it, I slow down for it because we value our cars. But I, my son has a speed bump right in front of his house, and, and it's in Detroit. And I tell you, those of us that are law-abiding people, we slow down and go over this speed bump like we're supposed to. But while I'm there visiting, it's inevitable that somebody's coming down that street and it's three speed bumps on his block and they don't slow down. 
So it's, it's enforcement that we have to do to make sure people pay for what they're doing when they're violating the laws of our community. And that's what we need to concentrate on. Uh, let's see. I want to thank Public Works, uh, DPW. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you for, when I looked out there and saw that snow, heavy as it was, I mean, please. But thank you for the job that you guys do, and we truly appreciate you. Um, another thing is that we are, we're going to have a, a a strong presence with trying to do cleanup in Harper Woods. And I, I want to thank Mr. Tevo and, and his wife for always being a part of making sure that we do their part of cleanup. Reggie was one of the first ones that automatically would go down the street and pick up trash along Beaconsfield. And for a long time, I didn't even know who he was because he wasn't trying to get notoriety to, to do anything. He was just wanting to make his community the best that it could be. So we have a few more Reggies, you know, and if people decide to feel like they really want to make a difference in your community, begin with you. You can complain all you want to, but when you begin with you, we're doing a part that you think needs to be done, we will eventually get to the place where we are back to the beautiful community that we once had. But we have too many people, too many players, that arbitrarily want to trash our community. I mean, you can be behind somebody at the stoplight and they just empty the bag of trash right out there on the sidewalk. Oh, I would love to be able to just arrest them, you know, but I can't. I can't even report them because I'm not the police officer. But those are the kind of people that we need to put on notice. We saw what you did and we don't like it. Please don't do that in our community. But, no, don't do that. Please don't do that because people shoot now. So please don't do that. Just. Just pray for them and keep it moving. <laughs> it's about the best we can do at this point. And hopefully that one day the police will be behind them when they do such a thing. And then they will be able to be uh, penalized and, and, and held accountable for what they do. Also, uh, I'll be going to Washington, D.C. the end of this month. And I also have an invitation for April, but I'm not sure if I'm going to take the April, but I will be going to Washington, D.C. And the reason that I go to Washington, D.C. or to the governor's mansion or to Lansing is because I want people to recognize that we are not the stepchild of this community area and that we deserve to have all the fundings and recognition that they give other communities. And as I was talking about Down River, back in the day, nobody knew what Down River was. But they continually put Down River in front of everybody. And now everything, people are continuously bringing money to Down River communities. Well, the Eastern Conference of Wayne County needs to be recognized and we need to make sure, call your representatives, send a letter, send an email to your state senator, to your congressperson, to your senator. Make them know that we are just not sitting here on our hands. We want to be, once again, the community that we deserve to be. And we only do that if the squeaking wheel gets the oil, yeah, we need to be the squeaking wheel to make sure that everyone understands that Harper Woods is here and we're trying to be the best that we can be because the quality of life that we moved here for is the quality of life I want to leave for my grandchildren and children. And with saying that, 
Mr. Jennings. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I'd like to make the motion for adjournment. Support. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Have a good evening and be safe, everyone.